friends, welcome back to the Craft Castle. The other day I showed you how to get extremely large print thin cuts. Here's the original one, this is nine inches, and this one's close to 16 inches. So huge difference in the print thin cut sector of Cricut, and I'm super, super, super pumped about this update. The other thing that is super exciting about this update is Cricut bought back the original registration marks for the print thin cut. I need to know how many of you have been Cricut users long enough to remember the registration marks being like this versus like the full box because that's when I remember Print Thin Cut is being these boxes. Now, when they originally had Print Thin Cut, this is the way it looked. And when they did this, I used to make the coolest wedding invitations. I mean, these things were absolutely a bestseller in my shop. I loved making them and their little ID barbecue and I would wrap like little twine around it. Okay, so when they did the update, they did that full box. And then the hack that I'm getting ready to show you, you couldn't do anymore because it just wasn't efficient. There was just so many more items that I was making with dark print thin cuts than, you know, let's say the lighter colors, you know, because, and let's pause for a second. If you have a Cricut maker, you probably can do dark printing cuts and you don't see an issue with um, your, your machines not reading the registration marks. But if you only have like a Cricut Explore, you cannot print and cut on dark paper. The LED light that's in there that scans these registration marks aren't strong enough to read dark paper, especially like a dark brown. Okay, so just to show you what I'm talking about, I am going to load in one of the craft card stocks without any, any hack to it. Let's see if it's going to read it. Okay, so we can see that if we did it with no hack, the craft card stock, you're going to get this print and cut error. It says we can't read the lines. What in the world? You don't know what you're doing. So back in the day, I used to have this hack to where you could create this. But when they gave us that full box, I could no longer do that. You probably could. It was a pain in the butt. It wasn't worth my time. So I said, screw it. I'm just going to take these off and the other items. And I just quit making them. It was just such a bummer because I don't have a Cricut maker. But since they brought back these little things, I am here to show you how to do a dark paper print thin cut on your Cricut Explorer. And I'm gonna do it two ways, because uh, <laughs> I got two hacks for you, but it's gonna be the same at the end. It's just one's more money saving and one's a little bit quicker. So I'm not gonna show you how to design this uh, invitation, because whoa, that would take a long time. I am just gonna show you how in the world we could get a print thin cut that is in the dark paper and i'm gonna show it to you two ways uh if you did not watch the um how to get large print thin cut and how to put yourself in beta and all of that stuff and you're not in beta yet go ahead and stop watching this video go back to the other video that i had posted showing you how to do the calibration how to do the beta and all of that stuff and then come back here and then we can continue moving forward. Now, if this is like a video for later on and we already don't even need beta and we are already in the live version of these new registration marks, then you can just bypass that and just keep on watching. Um, just because the time of the video of the recording, we still need to go into beta. So that is my spiel on that. Now let's get started. Okay, very first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into the description of this video and you're going to click a link and the link is for this file right here, the registration mark hack. That's the file. I've already created it. It's going to be for free. This is going to be the first technique that I'm going to show you. So when you click on the link in the description of this video, you're going to get, you're going to have this and you're going to either going to want to go to make it or customize. Just hit make it because there's no customizations needed. Now, I'm not quite sure if this would work for like your 11 by 17 printing cut. So just know that this is going to only work for the eight and a half by 11. I'm pretty sure I threw away the paper for this project, but I'm pretty sure the lines get bigger. And if that is the truth, and I find that that is the truth, rest assured, I will create additional files for you to accommodate for the larger uh, registration mark things. So we are going to need this file 
And then you're gonna need like sticker paper. I have like shipping labels right here. It's like eight and a half by 11. It's a shipping label, very thin, low quality, isn't amazing, but you're just gonna wanna grab some sticker paper. All the supplies that I use for this video will be down in the description of the video, like with the file. So just know that you are going to need a piece of sticker paper. I don't suggest using like a piece of cardstock for this. I mean, you could, but I just don't suggest it. Okay, and then all you're gonna wanna do is fill up your paper. So we're gonna go up into project copies and we're gonna fill this up. Pressing apply. And we're gonna go into material size and make it eight and a half by 11. Now, you're gonna notice that I only have seven inches because this is like a half sheet. I have already used it for other projects. So I only have a half sheet, but you're gonna wanna fill up a whole entire sheet of this. It, at least, at the very least, you're gonna need four of these little doodads because you have four lines on your sheet of paper right here. So all you wanna do is then press continue. We're gonna connect to one of the machines for me, I have a whole lot, so I'm gonna have a whole drop down belt. So I'm just gonna connect to a machine. Okay, and because we are using a sticker paper, we are going to change our settings. We're gonna go all the way up for me and my machine. I'm gonna do vinyl for this and then come over here. We're gonna do fast mode. This is gonna make it run a lot faster. We're just gonna press the blinking arrow or the blinking C and then it's going to cut all of our little registration mark things. Okay, and I always suggest whenever we cut anything new on a new material is taking our weeding pick pen and I am just going to weed out and make sure that it cut correctly. See how that just pops right out? And then like, let's do the outside too. See how the outside just weeds right out? Perfect, this is exactly what we want. And then you can go ahead and eject the mat out of the machine. If it did not cut through all the way, instead of pressing the eject button, you're gonna wanna press the C button. And that is just going to make the machine cut your mat. If you eject it and try and align it back up and put it in there and then recut this, it's going to be off by a whole lot. So you just wanna make sure that test new material and then weed it if it's good press the eject if it's not press the c again now that you have it all cut out all you want to do is now is weed out this small little portion we're not going to need that okay so when you get all of your things cut out and you have at least four registration mark hack things we are just going to press done because we're done with that now what you're going to want to do is you're going to open up one of your print thing cut items that you're going to want to use for dark paper. For me, it's going to be this I Do Barbecue Invite. Okay, so when this loaded up, it's already going to be on 11 by 17 because that was the last use item that I had used and that's what I selected for my material size. We're just going to go over here into material size and we're going to go down to eight and a half by 11. And when we do that, it's going to move to on one on each slot, which we know, cause I already have it printed, we have two on a sheet of paper. So I'm going just to rotate this, I'm gonna put this up here, and then I'm gonna go down to my second mat, drag this down just a little bit, and then you see those three dots, we're gonna click that and we're gonna go move object. And go over here, we're gonna click that first mat that we have and press confirm. Okay, then we're gonna rotate this over, and just arrange it anyway, doesn't matter. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna print this. So just press continue, and we're gonna print this like we would any other print thing cat. I'm gonna send it to printer, and I'm gonna choose my printer. I'm gonna do system dialogue because I'm gonna print two of them for you just because I'm gonna show you two ways to do this. So I'm gonna go to system dialogue and then press print. So I'm gonna do this twice. So I'm gonna go to PDF and open in preview, and then I'm gonna print this twice. Okay, so with this, you're gonna need your four, right? Because there's four lines on our mat. I'm just gonna take my weeding pick and I'm just gonna pick off one. To only work one at a time. Here it is. Okay, what I like to do is put the corners in place first. So coming in here, I'm gonna add in the corner. Okay, there is that and you can kind of see it. Um, there you go. See how there is that? Okay. Going in, we're gonna grab another one and doing the same thing, placing it in the corner first. Okay, we'll do the third. Okay, and then one last one. 
Okay, there we go. Now we have all four corners. One, two, three, four. They all have the white on there. Now let's put this back in our machine and see what happens. Throw this in our machine. I'm gonna press that C button and we're going to let the machine do its readings. Okay, and like a stinking miracle, it cut all of the dark lines and now it's gonna cut out my mason jar invites. Okay, so I'm gonna pop this out for you and look at that. It's perfectly centered, perfect, right? This is exactly what we're looking for. And like I showed you, it didn't wanna read it, but now with these little white lines, it reads it now. Oh my goodness. Okay, so let's go for the second hack. All right, we have all these whoop, dark printing cuts. So I'm sure you noticed that when we did this and we were adding in the little stickers, it was quite time consuming. So when we had originally had these little boxes and this is where the hacks are gonna come in, I hardly ever used this way because you, I mean, it just took forever, right? It was very time consuming to put all four lines on the sheet of paper and you wanted to make sure that you had it all lined up really well and it was kind of hard because the sticker was flimsy. The only time I suggest doing it this way is if you're doing like a one-off, you know, you're just printing one sheet of paper in a dark so you don't have to waste any extra ink. If you had the sticker paper laying around, that's perfect too. But you know, this, this hack I just didn't use as often. So this is great and it's wonderful. It clearly works, but the second hack is going to be my most used hack. So what you are going to need is just a sheet of printer paper. Nothing amazing, just a printer paper. We are gonna put that into our printer. Now here is my printed out uh, craft cardstock, dark cardstock. We're gonna go back in to our, our file, the file that's right here, and we are gonna print that, and we are gonna print it on the printer paper. Okay, now that that is printed out, we are gonna go over here to our, I already put the invite onto my mat. Here it is. Let's make sure it's nice and lined up. There we go. Okay, you are going to need some scissors and all I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to cut the corners out like that and make sure and line them up. Nothing like having them misaligned. And you wanna make sure you keep the corners because that's how we're gonna make sure that everything is lined up. Here is our four corners. Okay, so then taking painter's tape, scotch tape, any other tape. I prefer painter's tape because you can remove this. If you're doing a whole bunch of uh, invites or something like that, something that you're mass producing stuff, these would work at the best just because it won't uh, rip the paper and it's easily removed. So I'm just going to line up my corners with the edge of my paper and see how it's like flapping just a little bit, add a little bit more to this so then it won't flap too much. Okay, going on to the bottom corners, doing the same thing. We're gonna line up our corners. And here's the deal is you don't wanna put any of the blue tape around here. If it's, you know, on the sides, it's fine, but nothing over that line because the line's the crucial part to this. Okay, it's gonna look like Frankenstein was here or Do Dr. Frankenstein was here because it's gonna have all this tape on that. Now let's load this into the machine and see if it cuts. Okay, so I'm gonna press the C blinking C button. I'm gonna let the machine just do its job. So it read the registration marks. Now it's getting ready to cut. Okay, let's see if it cut. There it is and look, it's perfectly center. Perfect cuts, amazing. Okay, so with that, it did take a little bit more work, right? And it wasn't as time consuming as this one, but I mean, it still took work. Now let's pretend like this didn't already have the registration mark covers over it. If you were doing mass production like these invites, all you would do is you would just peel off this right here and we would put it on the bottom corner of our new print that still needs to print and then you just keep going so you just replace these and then you don't have to use a whole bunch of sticker paper but then also it just goes by a lot quicker too so making sure it's everything's lined up I'm going to push them onto the piece of paper all right and there you go so that was a lot quicker 
turnaround than doing it the stiffer way. The initial setup was kind of time consuming, but look at that. Now we have a new piece of paper. Let's pretend that we still needed to cut this out. We would put this back on our mat, run it through the machine, and off we go. Okay, so no matter what you do, the sticker version or the paper version, we have now created two hacks that you can trick the machine into thinking that you are cutting on a white piece of paper, but in reality, we are using some dark craft paper. I mean, game changer. Thank you so much to Cricut for giving us A, really large printing cuts, but B, giving us our little boxes back or our little lines back so we can now cut on darker paper. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait to see what you all create and I'm gonna start crafting as well on the dark paper. I hope I inspired you to make and I will see you later.